Okay. Huh, I wonder how that's not... Oh, the stars. You can actually see the stars. Maybe the stars can be picked up on this camera. I haven't done hardly anything to uh, learn how to use it. Um, anyway, so my evil day is done, which is probably why I sound completely exhausted, because I am completely exhausted. Um, to, to put it in a super black and white way, uh, it went off without a hitch. Um, apparently I'm a hell of a party planner. Um, sorry. I mean, I am exhausted. Also, I'm waiting for cars to come because it is way early. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I got the neighbors and the dogs and the cars and everything and I gotta watch out for the cats. Um, yeah, and so many damn relatives. Um, I consider myself lucky. At least a quarter of people that RSVP'd, or like didn't really RSVP, but rather said they were coming, didn't show. Like, thank you, God. Um... Our infamous bench got put in place. Um, it was in place a day early. I went down and took pictures, sent it to my sister, and she had a cow because somebody had placed stones on the bench, which, it, you know, it's a park. There's lots of people going by, people of different faiths. And I actually thought, I'm going to lose weights. I thought, I was actually really touched by it that some random person would see a new stone and put stone, you know, would put, um, put stones on top because, I mean, it's a, it's a public park where they got buried, just, um, park cemetery, I don't know, uh, it's not a church, it's a park, and, um, so, I mean, it's, it's very popular and, and lots of people walking through it all the time. So I actually thought it was nice. My sister thought it was quote unquote annoying. And I was like, oh God, here it goes, here it starts. Um, I'm physically exhausted because I did one of the classic power moves of a person with avoidant personality disorder, which is, you know, my mother used to describe it as putting on a costume. Um, that's not what it was. It's more like, you know, dress sort of the best you possibly could. Um, uh, my son said I look like I was going to a New Jersey mob funeral. Well, guess what? Those are the funerals I've been to because I used to live in Philadelphia. Um, so this is really vain or whatever. I'm going to tell you anyway. I had a basic black dress, but I bought it when my father died. And then I lost gobs of weight. So it was a little big. So it was also fairly plain. So my thing, which I'm sure you guys will never be able to know. I mean, unless you knew me, um, is I wear... Um, heels, shoes. I like different type of shoes. Um, if you're interested, a brand that I'm fascinated by but don't actually have, it's like one step beyond the guts that I would have um, to wear is a brand called Hot Chocolate Designs, Hot Chocolate Shoes, something like that. Um, and when you see their heels, that's the type of thing. Actually, what I ended up wearing was very similar. Grandma chic heels. Um, because they were black and lace and ribbons. And also heels, platform heels with chunky... Um, everything about them was chunky and big. So they were really easy to walk in and very, very comfortable for the first few hours. 
until my feet started swelling because that's what happens when you wear shoes for a while and then they started getting painful and they're still painful but cause it's the first time I wore them I mean that's what happens the first time you wear a pair of shoes it's gonna hurt duh that's why nobody's supposed to get a brand new pair of sneakers when they go to Disney World unless they don't want to walk unless they want to be hobbled because I was on my feet for the entire time um I also had is it coming up here now? Nope. Can you see Poppy? You can see Poppy. Here he comes. Good boy. I think he's the only one out tonight. But that doesn't mean he's not the he's not only a cat out. I think he's the only one that's following me. It is really early. I have totally destroyed my cat's schedule for the last two days. Freaked him out. Um three days maybe. And their fountain broke. Oh my god. Cats have a water fountain, which it, you know, was one of those things I was like, oh my god, this is so stupid. And then I bought it, and they love it, and that's how they prefer to get their water, as opposed to, you know, sitting in a bowl if they want. You know, it has, it's a water fountain. It has, like, spray and streams, and so they can drink from that as opposed to a water bowl except for Percy Percy prefers a water bowl still so I have both but their fountain broke it didn't really break it more like disconnected um so on top of everything else because I was busy doing everything else um they didn't have their fountain I did fix it today already Puppies are red. No neighbors are already not the best thing there. I'm just gonna come up here and wait. Anyway, um, so my schedule was insane. It didn't work yesterday, but it was also really hard, like getting stuff together, and especially because what did I have to do? I had to go to do something. Oh, well, my son's birthday was two days ago. When what the heck did I do yesterday? I don't even remember. I seriously don't remember, um, because I didn't work. Oh, I had my car fixed again. Um, brake lines went. So I had my brake lines fixed, and then I finished up the buying of everything under the sun. So, I mean, it, it's been going, 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 and then today was completely nuts, because at 9 o'clock this morning, I had to pick up like, I had an appointment at 9 exactly to pick up the food, the flowers, and the desserts in three different places. And then at 10 was the actual burial, and at 10 was the party. Um, and I didn't even know where this hall was. My sister told everybody, oh, it's in a basement. No, it was not in a basement. She assumed it was in the basement because she thought that's what I would do. Told everybody it was in the basement. No, I... Um, rented a wedding hall because it had lots of space to spread out because there are people coming from all over the country and we are in the middle of a pandemic and it actually I mean who knows maybe we did just cause a super spreader event oh well everybody except my niece was vaccinated that was in that place so I think it was okay but anyway um and I met my niece for the first time and I had conversations with the kids. They thought I was fine and I was cool. Um, I saw my sister. <sighs> I saw all these bloody relatives. My uncle, I didn't want him to be the officiant. He was my mother's brother. What are you doing? Oh, it's you and the leaves. Now there's leaves and you're in leaves. And I'm thinking it's something else moving around. Um, Of course, he made it all about him. That's exactly what I expected. Oh, there is definitely somebody up there. I see the light. Hey, Pops, do you want to go back so real quick? Let's go back. We're going to go back. Oh. Which is fine by me, because, again, <laughs> I'm busted up. Um, every single one of my father's brothers and sisters came, which I was completely amazed. Um... 
because they couldn't even find a couple of them and they you know they lost touch and they were surprised they came and they were upset everybody was upset it was hard seeing their names on that stone and I did not stay to see them buried because I ran around and got all this stuff I set it up a little bit at the basically I unloaded the car um, and then ran up because I had my parents stone and their ashes ran up uh, to the burial I was actually one of the last people there because I've been doing everything else and then I was the first one to leave as soon as it was done ran back and set the whole thing up um, but we heard over and over again that it was such a nice spread <laughs> and that um, you know the the flower and picture thing with Jiggy looked nice and the whole thing was really nice they really liked it uh, especially because my sister's been saying it's going to be a load of crap because I was the one that was doing it and I did do it all um, but again didn't miss anything the only thing that was really bad was I got I mean we had there was no need for it whatsoever I, we had like plastic forks and things but I got little plastic um, tongs for the food and they snapped immediately I was like oh great but again we didn't need them. We could have used forks. I just thought I saw them and I was like, okay, I'll get them. I don't know. But it didn't really matter. I mean, actually, when I, we got there, we got the whole place set up and then nobody was coming and nobody was coming. And I was like, oh. So all this effort and nobody's going to show up. Oh. Oh. Because they were all, you know letting us set up and be the family pack meal and all this other crap. But I avoided socializing for like 40 minutes. Anyway, and they did show up and they did eat. And so all of my sort of paranoid worries that, where's Pansy? What is she doing up there? I say that all the time. I guess she just walks up here now. She's not supposed to. She's not supposed to come this far. It's like half a mile walk all around for her. You're not supposed to come this far, kitty. See, it's to here it's about a half a mile. If we go all the way, which we didn't, it's been a while since we did. Well, it's a while since we did on camera. We only do it like twice a week. Um, it's a mile and a half for Pops altogether. And he's supposed to do a mile. So we don't have to go that far. But anyway, I'm avoiding talking about like the real thing that was traumatizing as you know yep okay it was very sore had to wear a weird outfit had to do all this work for everybody but actually it was appreciated I heard no criticism at all I heard a lot of people that were shocked at how nice it was and oh you girls <laughs> um did such a great job with it the whole thing they're like wow we've never done this before you know never seen anything like this it was you know well above and beyond what they expected um and we came in significantly under budget um so i think that we're both going to end up with like eight hundred dollars um so that's pretty seriously under budget. Um, when we finally get paid, the check is supposed to be here on Thursday. What is that? Is that tomorrow? I don't know. If it's not, if it doesn't come tomorrow, I have to call on Friday. <sighs> but that would be lovely if I got that check. Um, I'm still avoiding talking about it. Did I talk to everyone? Yes, I was. Well, okay. Somebody had sort of given me kind of advice. Like, I extrapolated the advice. The advice was, just listen to everybody's stories and don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and what I got from that was the word everyone's and decided, okay, I will circulate. I will be the friggin' social butterfly host. 
Which means that I will only talk for a couple of minutes to each person. Hi, how you doing? You know, how you feeling? Blah, blah, blah. Let them tell me. Yeah, like the younger cousins were like, I can't believe what you're wearing. It's really great. Love your outfit. That sort of thing. I was like, whatever. Because it was a hat and it was shoes and a dress. And I don't normally look that way, I guess. Well, no, I don't normally look that way. I'm the one that's a weirdo that wears, you know, six inch heels with leggings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because again, it's kind of a power move. Like we're in, you know, it is weird that I would wear a great big, you know, oversized sweater, which is what I'm wearing right now, um, and heels. It's such a, a crazy combination just because I get the cozy safe from the sweater and I get the, you know, sort of, like I said, it's kind of a power move wearing the shoes. Although, like, it's also a workout. <laughs> I don't need to do the gym today because <laughs> um, I can definitely feel it all the way up the back of my legs uh, running around in six inch heels for hours on end and moving stuff around like either a possum or a cat <laughs> it's too far down underground to be a ghost uh it's also too close to people to be a ghost anyway um but yeah um so i just kept talking to people everybody and tried to put the conversation that i just had out of my mind and just go 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 and a few of them ask the stupid questions. I mean, they're not stupid questions. They're based on, this is what I used to know you used to do, and what are you doing now? And, you know, and they asked, I would tell them the truth. I would say, okay, well, yeah, things are radically different now because I had five years where I couldn't hold a scheduled job. And it truly had to be like, you know, gig work, work when I could squeeze it in um, because I was taking care of my mother and my father and my son and they're you know I was overnight in the ER at least once a week and that was my life for five years and now it's radically different and then when they're asking what I do now I tell them about my travels and when I reel off all the places that I've been this calendar year since January they're just like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing now. And they're like, mm, well, okay. <laughs> you know, and it isn't anything. I don't let anybody get to the point. I mean, oh, like thinking about it now, it's kind of amazing. And I don't know if it's just, they would have assumed or what, or if I just blasted them with the information anytime anybody started to ask I, I hit them with this stuff that they had no idea they were shocked into not asking more questions I did not get asked once my relationship status I was like wow that's good I had one person asking me about my writing and I was pretty reluctant about answering because the hard truth is um, I had a concussion and I had a brain injury and it is way more difficult I mean I, the quickest I ever wrote a novel, and we're talking like full length novel, was 17 days, um, start to finish for the first draft. Um, I used to write screenplays. If I couldn't write them in 10 days, they were crap, throw them out because they weren't interesting and exciting enough for me to be able to do, because the screenplay is 120 pages and a lot of it's white space. So it's really not that much writing, but if you can't, in my opinion, if I couldn't squeeze it out in 10 days, it was crap. There wasn't enough interesting stuff there even for me to finish it. So what the heck? Um, so now, oh, look, my cat's getting killed. Oh, come on. Yeah. He, we go for a walk every night. Oh, okay. Doctor's orders because he's overweight. Oh, okay. I just didn't want to hit him. Is that your cat too? Yeah. 
<laughs> we're out on our walk. It's hard to see them now that they've repaved the road. And uh, <laughs> black cats on a black road is hard to see. What are you doing? <laughs> on top of everything else. And now somebody yelling at me out the car door. I mean, it's nice, I guess. <gasps> okay, that's my sign. I need to turn this off and get going. Um, but I survived this stupid thing. Um, and immediately, like, crashed, and I'm exhausted, and I'm probably going to... Like, I, I, I thought I was going to fall asleep in the car and drive back. I know. Look what you did. You got in the middle of the road and almost got squished by a car. Don't do that, Randy. And she's like, this is my road. I'm not moving. There's not supposed to be cars out because we're having a walk. Here comes another one. Um, is she still in the street? No, she's not in the street. Stay out of the street, Lindsay. <sighs> Stay out of the street, Pansy. This is why you're not supposed to come out here. She right there. See her white feet? Anyway, um... Yeah. Um... So, again, it was a classic pendulum. Massive, massive stress massive, massive stress of having to pull off that whole party and get everything done and, and deadlines and financial pressure and all that stuff. Here comes another car. Now where'd she go? I don't even see her. Oh, is she in the middle of the street? There she is in the middle of the street. Oh, Pansy, please don't get killed. What are you doing back here, cat? What are you doing back here, cat? Trying to get squished? No, don't run in front of the car. What are you crazy? Okay, I have to get these cats in the house. Come on, come on, Pansy. Um, they're gonna cause me an absolute, you know, heart attack breakdown. Um, yes. So the the st stress of the deadline like pushed on the pendulum enough for me to be like a social butterfly. I used it for the few hours I was there. It felt so much longer. It felt like eight hours and it was only like two anyway. And, um, and the, it's going to swing the other way. I can already feel it. I mean, I'm physically exhausted. There's number one, but, um, emotionally I will, I'll be an absolute terrible wreck. And I'm really glad I don't work tonight. And I'm really glad I work the next three days because it'll be a good distraction. She is still standing right directly in the middle of the street. Oh my God. Okay. Um, I gotta go collect her. I'm gonna actually have to carry her home. Normally it's only Perry that I carry home, but I guess I'm carrying Pansy tonight. And um, yeah, so I'll probably disappear for a little bit don't worry about it just um mental self-care while i get over this um but it it's done it's over it's done the next big thing well the next big thing is probably earn some money get that money situation because i still have this nice big fat check coming from my father's estate um uh so i gotta get that straightened out that'll be the end of the week and then it's, it's uh, traveling again and this cat what are you doing? She is literally exactly in the middle of the street. What are you doing? 